Hi everyone and welcome to another video. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, I'm the Hermit Tarot and this is my YouTube channel. A massive welcome back to those who are returning. It's so lovely to connect with you all. I have had a little hiatus. I was on what you would call a holiday, I guess. I didn't really tell many people that I was going. I just kind of did it. Um, so I'm feeling good. I'm feeling refreshed. I'm feeling ready. It is still Mercury retrograde at the time that I'm filming this. So cross our fingers that there's no technical issues. Knock on wood that everything goes according to plan. But speaking of Mercury retrograde, I did put out a suggestion to all my wonderful people on Instagram to ask you guys what you want to see from me. And so many responses came through, so I'm going to bookmark them. I've screenshotted the first wave and I'm going to make sure that I can archive that story and refer back to it throughout the next couple of months. I'm thinking at least the next three months and then I'll put up another post. Um, but one of y'all suggested this reading. I did my own little pick a card on it, not pick a card, sorry, my little, own little reading on it. And Spirit suggested that this is the reading that we go with. Justice upright, the five of swords reversed. And at the back of the energy, at the back of the energy, at the back of the deck, the bottom deck energy was the six of pentacles and the lovers. So we're asking Spirit today, does the person on your mind miss you? And are they coming back? It had to be a love reading. And I think that the main intention behind this reading from Spirit's point of view is to have a look at whether the energy that you're wanting is reciprocal. I don't think all of you are going to want reconciliation with the person that's on your mind, but I think that all of you deserve to know where this person truly stands, what they are hoping for, wanting, intending, and I guess the likely outcome of their actions with that five of swords and the lover's card. So I'm keen to get into it. There's going to be an extended reading as well. The extended reading is going to be specific to each of the groups. So stay tuned for that. Speaking of the groups, here they are. I'm going to do three because I'm doing an extended as well. Doing more than three groups is honestly insane it's very <laughs> taxing on me so we're gonna stick to three starting with group one over here from my brand new deck you guys have the cuckoo clock i hope i'm saying that right cuckoo clock for group one over here group two you guys have the spoon card so group two in the middle here with the spoon card and group three you will have the talisman card over here on the end. Now this deck, let me see if I can figure out what it's called. I got it from Tarot Stack. It's called the Green Glyphs Oracle. And as soon as I saw it on their website, I just thought to myself, you know what, I need that. I need to give it a go. I don't think that this is a beginner's deck, but the guidebook is pretty handy. It's very explanatory and it also offers um, spread ideas which most guide books do but it's very helpful when you have an oracle deck to kind of have spread ideas um, but with that being said I don't think this is a beginner deck this is for those that are wanting to challenge themselves who have like rudimentary knowledge of tarot and are wanting to really push their intuitive reading to another level so I would recommend this for intermediate to advanced readers just from what I've seen so far so I'm keen to get into it I don't want to talk anymore if you do need more help selecting a group tune in to the meditation clip which will be playing right after this that meditation is guided to help connect you to your intuition so that you can intuitively select a group that you feel most drawn to and like I always say when you know which of these three groups you are feeling most drawn to, check your timestamps in the description box or in the pinned comment and join me in your reading. So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. 
Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point. I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with the rest in mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number, it may be an object that I showed you, it could be a specific colour, it could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready, and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Hi group one and welcome to your reading. It is so lovely to have you all here. Oh my gosh, I just got that feeling. I feel like I know some of y'all. It only happens every now and then. Um, did it happen recently? You guys would know better than me. But anyway, I just got it. I just got that feeling. I feel like I know you. So welcome. Regardless of if we know each other or not, it is so lovely to have you all here. Thank you for your overwhelming sense of presence. There's always a group that just comes with that energy. It is a privilege to read for you today. Hopefully we can get some messages that are really helpful, that resonate, and that really steer you on the right path. Now we're asking spirit about the person on your mind. So I just want to say it is very, what's the best word? essential <laughs> it is very essential that you come to this reading with a specific person on your mind whether they are somebody that you've already met or they could be a the idea of somebody in that maybe you're here asking about a future spouse um it's just very helpful for us in this energy and especially with me channeling this group energy to come with a specific person in mind. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's get into it. We're gonna ask spirit, does the person on your mind miss you? There is going to be an extended, my beautiful group ones. I don't know too much about that yet. We're gonna talk about it towards the end of your reading. So cuckoo clock. This card is a little bit of a um, clue, but it's not going to be our final energy. I'm gonna be pulling cards from other decks just to get a bit more information. So Spirit, for my group ones, can I pull another card from this beautiful green glyphs oracle deck? Does the person on group one's mind miss them? Whoops, okay, that's not shuffling very well. Does the person on group one's mind miss them, Spirit? person on group one's mind we have mystery box wow okay and at the back of this deck is portal that's what it looks like i'm gonna leave it over here it did come out reverse i didn't know if i was gonna take reversals um and then something said yes so one of my spiritual guides is very clean He's very clean for my days. Very keen on taking that card as a reversal. So let's get tarot out using a new tarot deck called Spirit Speaks Tarot. I have one other deck from them. You might recognize their art. But this is the first time I've had the privilege of using their tarot deck. So Spirit, tune me into Group One's energy. Does the person on Group One's mind miss them, please, Spirit? Does the person on group one's mind miss them? Wow, that just fell out. We have the nine of cups reversed. We also have the three of swords upright. Does the person on group three's mind miss them, please spirit? We also have the six of swords upright. Okay, let's move these over a little bit so they all fit. Is that kind of good? It's pretty good. At the back of this deck is the Three of Cups reversed. Okay, I'm just gonna pull one more deck to clarify. 
Sorry about all the shuffling. Some of you guys don't mind, um, others do. So skip ahead if it's inconvenient for your schedule or speed up the time as well, the playback speed. Spirit, send me into group one's energy. Does the person on group one's mind miss them, please? Okay, we have the Six of Swords reverse, clarifying the Nine of Cups reversed. Clarify the Three of Swords. I we just got two cards on the ground, Knight of Wands, and eh, we also have the Three of Cups. So I'll keep them like that. It's not ideal, but it'll work. Clarify that Six of Swords. We have the Moon coming out. So the second deck is the Hermetic Tarot deck. Okay, let's talk about it. So here's the thing, sweet souls. The person on your mind definitely feels like someone that isn't looking at this connection clearly. I think that they are somebody who has a very different version of the story, of the situation, of the events that transpired between you. It's clear that this is a group in separation with the three of swords coming out, the six of swords upright. There's part of this person that logically knows it's in both of your best interest for them to move on. And they are really in an energy here of trying to heal, but there is definitely an emptiness that has them still attached to you. So I wouldn't say that this person misses you. They miss the way that you made them feel. They miss the way that you brought such a presence, such a joy to their day, to their moments. Time with you, even if it was mostly online through like communication with the Six of Swords, really brought this person a sense of purpose and it gave them a lot of interaction that stopped them from being idle. I have a feeling that you are somebody who kind of they wanted to put energy into because if they didn't then they just had all this energy just sort of sitting there. So it kind of feels like at times they use this connection as a distraction and I honestly question whether this person even had long-term intentions. I feel like they would have wasted a lot of your time only if you were somebody who was trying to make plans for the future and who was really trying to take things to the next level. I'm sitting in this energy and I feel disappointed. I feel like, you know what? It could have, would have, should have been something more. Um, and there's definitely still a lot of potential there, chemistry there, attraction there. But who's to say that the same thing isn't going to happen again? And that's the thing. This could be somebody who you've had a few cycles with. Like they may have come and gone a few times. They, it may be an on and off connection or they could be something here that like the two of you just come together and you separate and you come together and you separate. But I just don't see a lot of growth here. I'm seeing cycles. I'm seeing a lot of threes. I'm seeing illusions, which is a distortion of perception and it doesn't mean that what we believe isn't real it just means that this person's view of the connection isn't real they are somebody who's romanticizing and idealizing aspects without taking the initiative to implement what they want just daydreaming and fantasizing so their energy is still very connected to you my group ones there's a reason why this person has probably been on your mind maybe you've actively tried to move forward and to do what you can to create space and distance between the two of you but i just feel like this is somebody who still has a tie to you the door isn't fully closed with this portal card reverse there's still a connection here if this is somebody that you are wanting to leave in your past spirit is strongly encouraging you to remain strong to remain mentally and energetically strong because they are really pulling on your energy they're really pulling on you so you're going to have to be very careful about the thoughts that you entertain because you are at high risk of repeating cycles with this person and at the end of the day everything happens the way it is intended to there's no right or wrong path it's just about recognizing how our choices and our actions lead us to these situations and these outcomes. When it comes to 
them and the way that they are approaching the connection energetically, I feel like this person is lamenting. They are kind of giving this victim energy um, and they're making out like a lot of what happened in terms of a separation or an ending was because of something that you said or did. They believe that yes, like, you know, it takes two to tango, but it wasn't my decision to end things. It was, I just needed time or I just needed space or this is just what we do. And so they almost come across as like a victim of the circumstances. And I feel like within their friend group, like it's something that people laugh at. Like they, they have this sort of reputation in this connection with you of being somebody who is hot and cold, spontaneous, impulsive, who goes through these big waves of emotion. And I don't think that it's just with you, sweet soul. I think that's just this person's nature. I think they just go through big roller coasters of emotions, big highs and big lows. And their friends seem to be aware of that because there's this energy around them of almost laughing at what they've gotten themselves into with you. And I think that they have people who are just like sick of this person's bull, sorry for swearing, but you know, attitude and energy and actions. They're just like, come on now, like when are you gonna learn? You just do the same thing over and over again. Their group of friends don't even bother giving this person advice anymore because they're like, you're a one trick pony. You just do the same things and you expect different outcomes. So I do think that this person recognizes that the state of your connection currently is an opportunity for growth for this person and for both of you. They do feel a little bit crazy. I can see why we got the cuckoo clock now because they almost feel like they, they miss, they think about you more than what they were expecting to, okay? This person was probably ready to just sort of jump into something else or to distract themselves with somebody else. I feel like this person moves very quickly and like they, they are someone who's probably, you know, very actively meeting people and very actively trying to distract themselves. They come across as either a serial data, um, and I, that has a heavy connotations, but I just mean that somebody that's really actively like trying to meet people on dating apps or somebody who is very good at distracting themselves. So if you know that this person would never use a dating app, spirit is saying they're very good at distracting themselves, but that doesn't stop them from thinking about you. And that's where we get that energetic pull from, that tie. Now, this beautiful deck comes with a guidebook. I read intuitively, but I do want to see if I've missed any messages for you. So I'm gonna open the guidebook. We're gonna have a look at portal first because it is your bottom deck energy. And thank God this guidebook is alphabetic because I was like, how the heck am I gonna find each of these cards? All right, so let's look for portal, please, spirit. So in reverse, portal is distorted pers uh, perspective, realignment, high expectations, and closed off. A new portal presents itself. Portals exist all around us. Some are only felt and never seen. Some open when you were born and stay open your whole life. Others might open only once and some you never even know. Portal is a symbol of wonder and an openness to accept whatever may come your way. So intuition was pretty bang on with that distorted perspective energy. I don't know if you can see that. I can't tell if it's in focus or not. Let's have a look at that mystery box energy now. The mystery box energy represents unanswered questions, needing clarity, mystery, the unknown, and is everything in front of you truly as you see it? If we approach the cube knowing only of squares, is it still a cube? Instead of answering questions, the cube asks, asks you more. It is a relic from the unknown, and as long as you try to figure it out, it will never open. Yeah, I still feel like there are unanswered sort of questions or like I was tapping into that potential. Um, this person probably has things that they really want to say to you now that I'm 
looking at this through that lens, all these swords, empty conversations, they may have dodged some questions that you had and they may be thinking about those questions and, and what their answers would be and what they kind of wanted to say to you, especially with the Six of Swords again down here, like that's twice. I feel like this person still checks up on you if they have access to your social media um, or they could be like wanting to because some of y'all probably have blocked this person just to kind of create that fresh clean break that you really wanted. There's definitely this energy of like absent-mindedly drifting into thoughts of you and having these unanswered questions. I don't know if I showed you the um, page from this guidebook for the question box, the mystery box. Let's have a look at that cuckoo clock now. And then we'll move on to the second half of your reading. Oh, here we go. Okay, cuckoo clock represents distraction. Y'all, my intuition, I'm so proud. Tethered to time, waiting and nuisance. You're in an old kitchen. You notice a retro cuckoo clock on the wall nearing four o'clock. As the minute hand hits 12, the little bird pops out of its window. You're distracted by the repetitive movement of the bird. By the time you recenter yourself, you have forgotten what you were thinking about. Or were you just waiting for the time to pass? Yeah, again, distractions. This person just seems to really enjoy distractions and using anything and anyone to kind of get their mind off of other things. Because I don't think they're deeply healing. I think that they're just numbing at this stage. Alcohol is coming through or other vices. The Three of Cups for me is usually alcohol. Though. Oh, the Moon card could represent other vices, actually. Other substances. But when I think of that, I think of... Oh, actually, we have the... Oh, okay, sorry, I'm getting contradictive now. Usually I think of um, Neptune energy as like downers things that are like sedative in nature, um, sedative in nature, or um, things that really kind of sort of bring you down and just kind of numb you. But with the Knight of Wands, these are uppers. These are things that may also numb. Cocaine is coming to mind. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube. Um, but things that kind of distract us and, and make us feel good temporarily. So this person may be doing that as well i'm only throwing it out there if it resonates i don't want to paint that as everybody's story um obviously just take it if it suits the person because this person does seem to be trying to pick themselves up and they're looking at their reality they're looking at their connection with you through rose colored glasses and they're wanting to kind of feel better than what they do so that fits the bill um let's pack this up the second half of your reading is about asking if this person is going to come back so let us have a look all right <clears throat> i do like this deck i'm going to use this deck again i'm going to close this Spirit, is this person coming back? I already have a guess, but we'll see what Spirit says. Because of the cards, like I really think that this person is going to try to message you or like pop up really casually and just be like, hey, but let's see what Spirit says. Spirit, will this person come back to group one's life? We have Rooster and we have Willow Tree. So I'm going to put those cards like that. At the back of the deck is Yesterday's Coffee showing up reversed. I'm going to have to keep that out of frame so we can fit all the other cards in. Spirit, is this person coming back to group one's life? Is this person coming back, Spirit? Okay, from the Spirit Speaks deck, we have the King of Cups upright. Is this person coming back, Spirit? We have the Ace of Pentacles. Is this person coming back? And we have the Two of Cups. At the back of the deck is the Hanged Man reverse. 
So I do think they will. I think it's going to be very hard for this person to get you off their mind. I just want to use a different deck to clarify the cards. I don't want to use tarot. I'm going to use oracle, or an oracle deck that will fit in the, in the camera frame. Okay, spirit. Is this person coming back? Can we please clarify that king of cups for my group of swan pusses? My group ones... I'm hearing that song by Kanye West. I know that he's a villain in a lot of people's stories, so I'm not glorifying him in any way. Um, but I'm hearing that song, Only One, which he and Paul McCartney wrote. We have Cancer coming out for the King of Cups. Spirit, clarify the Ace of Pentacles. We have Chiron in reverse. And clarify that Two of Cups, please. We have Taurus reverse. There's part of this person that feels like they need you. I don't know if that's your story. I'm going to get advice for you. But this person feels like they need you. Like I'm getting this energy of genuinely missing you, missing your energy, missing the way that you make them feel. Sorry, I'm just going to readjust myself. Um <clears throat> I'm not taking sides. I'm just going to be the messenger. So let me just paint the picture from their perspective and then I'll get you advice. So from their perspective, yes, I feel like this person is very keen to really try to get close to you again. There is an energy here of wanting to be emotionally close to you, my group ones. I do think that this person thinks of you very fondly. I think that they really value the energy that you bring and I think that there's part of them that wants to feel the way that you make them feel again they want you to be somebody that they can emotionally rely on and I think that this does go both ways but they're coming in in a quite a volatile way which is why I'm glad I used an oracle deck to clarify your tarot because the tarot paints a picture of somebody that's emotionally kind of cautious but available with serious intentions and a desire for compromise and balance but the thing is tarot shows that this person does have good intentions uh sorry the oracle cards show this person does have good intentions like they want that nurturing in the connection that cancer really brings but they just haven't fully learned nor healed nor experienced what that is so there could be a lot of trial and error between the two of you with Chiron here reverse there's a lot of energy of triggering and I think that them coming back in is them genuinely trying genuinely trying to heal the situation with you and to be somebody that is more kind of healed for you but I just don't know if they know how to do it. So they may, without even meaning to, trigger you and cause you um, triggers or wounds or un unsettled sort of feelings that you didn't realize were still there. There's this energy of things being unresolved with Chiron reverse. And I think that they have good intentions to address that. But I just, it's like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> they don't really know what they're doing. They don't really know how to make that happen. And that's why we have Taurus reverse too. Because there's this energy here of trying not to be stubborn from their perspective. The reason why your connection ended could have been because this person just couldn't bend. They weren't willing to be flexible. They weren't willing to compromise. They weren't willing to see things from your perspective. Or they couldn't agree to disagree. So I see them trying to be less stubborn. And I see them really trying to be more kind of open to what you want and to what you have to say and to what your feelings are. Um, I just think that it's going to take a little bit of time. And that's why we have Taurus reverse. So this person is definitely open to hashing things out with you. They don't just want to jump into something, right? We're starting from the bottom with the Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Cups. There are a lot of feelings here already with Cancer and the King of Cups. There's a lot of feelings here and they're going to realize, this is why they reach out to you, by the way, not that we were supposed to cover it, but you're welcome. The reason why they reach out to you 
The reason why they come back is because they will realize that they have a lot of feelings for you, group one. There is a lot of love here. There is a lot of care here. There's this genuine energy of wanting to take care of you, wanting to be somebody that you care for and that they can care for. And they really are hoping to move the connection forward. Um, they're really hoping to be able to let bygones be bygones, but they are acknowledging that they do need to address things. They can't just come in and be like, woo, like, look at us. Look at, look at who we are right now. They have to talk about the past. They have to address the history. They know that. So them coming back is a big deal. And because of that, intuitively over here, I just feel like this person is going to come in pretty big. I don't think it's going to be casual. I know that that's what I predicted. I don't think it's going to be casual. I think that there's going to be a big sort of action to get your attention with rooster here um and willow tree is also giving this energy of wisdom and almost like a spiritual pull this person just feels like you are somebody who is meant to be in their life and vice versa there is this energy here of wanting to rely on you and to depend on you so let's see what the oracle guidebook says about those two cards if there's anything else that I've missed um I do want to look at yesterday's coffee which is reversed first and let's see what that's about yesterday all my troubles seem so far away oh my gosh okay so here's the thing and this makes sense with Taurus when this card is reversed it represents an important alert letting feelings go cold, obscurity, and lacking routine. This card says, there it is, the cup of coffee you only took a few sips from before you placed it on a surface that has become a graveyard of forgotten cups. Very relatable. The cold, day-old coffee is almost enticing. You decide to take a swig. It doesn't taste so good, but it reminds you of something you have forgotten about. What is it? I feel like this person may have tried to move on and that other person just wasn't it. For some of y'all, this person was like trying to meet other people, to see other people, and they were like, Ugh, I miss my group ones. So this is what the guidebook looks like in terms of that card. Hopefully you can read it. I don't know if it's in focus. And let's move forward. We've got to have a look at Rooster next. So upright, this card is reliable. It represents sureness, early starts, and consistency. Every morning, the rooster brings in the day. The rooster is reliable, consistent, and right on time. It gives direction. It has a purpose. It knows its job and does it with a deafening crow. Be reliable like the rooster. Get an early start and you will be well ahead. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like this person is trying to be somebody that you can depend on. And they want you to be somebody that they can depend on. They just feel like your story isn't finished yet. Willow Tree is about peace, appreciation, understanding, and spring. It's the middle of spring and you're walking through a blooming meadow. As you come across a majestic willow tree... The sunlight spills through the cascading leaves and you decide to sit under it. Peace washes over you and so does your newfound appreciation for life. So, yeah, you are a light, sweet soul. I'm being called to say from your spiritual team that you are somebody that brings this energy to a lot of people, okay? So it's not just something that you share with this person. It's them finally recognizing that you have this energy so I want to get advice for you. I want to see what your spiritual team has to say about this. And I'm going to leave these cards out because let these cards be loud about what it is that this person is trying to bring to the table. And let's see what your spiritual team wants you to do about it. Spirit, tune me into group one, the spiritual team, please. Now, can we please get advice from them for group one? What advice does group one spiritual team have regarding this person and this situation? 
Okay, we have the Five of Swords coming out reversed. Win or lose. Excuse me, my nose is leaking. Okay, we also have Dreams Come True, the Nine of Cups reversed. What advice does Group 1 spiritual team have? And we have Daydreams and Decisions. And Decisions. Okay, at the back of the deck is the Heart Chakra. So here is the thing. I know that that card's not fully in frame but we're just gonna have to deal with what we've got sweet souls i do have a new camera tripod which i'm going to use in the next video um, but for now this is what we've got so here's the thing your spiritual team is saying don't forget why you walked away in the first place okay the five of swords reversed is not necessarily about proving a point at this stage you don't want to let your previous actions define your future you've got to be very careful about acting accordingly to the situation forget why you walked away so you really need to think about the actions that you should take here there's nothing wrong with gathering more information but when it comes to the emotional connection to this person you carry the weight of that proudly you are somebody who is ready and who deserves somebody else who can reciprocate the level of openness you have when it comes to love you're a very loving, kind, generous person. And I do think that this person is not your only option, but they seem to be one of the only people your heart actually wants. So at the end of the day, with all of this heart chakra energy over here, your spiritual team is encouraging you to do what your heart wants. And if that means going through another cycle with this person, then that means going through another cycle with this person. Because ultimately, following your heart isn't ever wrong. It's going to show you exactly what you should be focusing on. Whether this person has genuinely developed enough to be able to take things to the next level with you, or whether they end up proving to you that they haven't changed and then you have to recuperate and take that energy elsewhere you're going to get the answers you need by following your heart and i genuinely think you've got to be mindful of people in general who expect so much from you without being truly available themselves with this nine of cups you are somebody who deserves someone who can give as much as they take and this person had the tendency to be very imbalanced in this connection previously. So pay attention to that moving forward. Pay attention to how they make you feel. Not the way that they temporarily sort of spark your interest, but how do they actually make you feel about yourself? And with that seven of cups reversed, ultimately you're gonna choose exactly what your heart wants. So this advice is almost just practical advice, little things that you can go off of. But I do think that what you end up doing is going to be very important in narrowing down the pathways in love that you can take moving forward. Because a lot of you are going to choose this person and that's not a bad decision, but it is going to be very telling. And if you don't choose this person, the person that you do choose is going to feel very obvious to you because they're the only person that you want. So if this person or whoever else is in your energy isn't obvious to you and doesn't feel like a, a heart-based decision in terms of you don't feel emotionally called to move towards them, then, then just wait. Wait for that strong emotive pull because it will be there for you. Your next chosen person is somebody who you won't be able to overlook. You will obsessively want just them until their actions prove differently and your heart chooses differently. So that's what I'm seeing for you, my group ones. I'm going to take this into the extended now. Let's see what spirit wants to talk about in the extended. What should we talk about here, spirit, for group one? What do they need to know about their love life? Let's 
We have the Princess of Pentacles reversed. We also have the Universe. And we have the Emperor reversed. So I'm getting a few things. Three of Swords reversed at the back of the deck. Oh gosh, I hope I remember this. Okay, so here's the thing. The first thing that we need to look at is the potential of this connection with the Page of Pentacles reversed. What is the potential between you and this person? What could this connection be? The next thing we need to look at is what is the next chapter in your love life with the universe here? What cycle is closing? What cycle is starting? And then we need to have a look at what is happening that you aren't expecting. So what surprises are coming for you in your love life with the emperor reversed? There's a lot of energy here of you kind of surrendering or feeling like your love life is out of your control. So I wanna have a look at that. What are the things that you aren't expecting? And then lastly, with the three of swords at the back of the deck, we do need to have a look at where this situation is heading between you and your person. So that kind of implies actions, but there's also this energy of karma with that card. So. I'm just going to leave it like that and write down what I've just said and we'll see what comes out. So if that sounds interesting and especially if the first part of this reading resonated for you, group one, if you want to support this channel and gain access to those additional messages, the link to your extended reading is in the description box and the pinned comment. That link does take you to my website where I host nearly 300 extended readings. So please make sure you click on the right group before you purchase it. Double check, triple check. It takes me a long time to get through my emails. I have like 3000 of them at the moment actually um, so please make sure you click on the right group you are group one of my do they miss you and are they coming back reading that I posted in April 2024 so make sure you're looking at the right reading before you purchase it thank you so much for all your time group one if this is where you are leaving us thank you for trusting me with your messages thank you for supporting me this community and tarot here on YouTube I wish you peace prosperity abundance happiness health, wealth, success, and joy on your journey ahead. Look after your beautiful selves until we meet again. Bye. and welcome to your reading we're going to be asking spirit if the person on your mind misses you and are they going to come back spirit really took the wheel for this reading i left it completely up to the instagram following to choose a topic um, and out of the suggestions i left it up to spirit to choose and it had to be a relationship reading um, i shuffled the cards back in but it was quite obvious that there's a lot of closure that's needed in the collective, most likely because I'm filming this at the time of Mercury retrograde. So I just want to be clear and say whenever this video found you is when it was meant for you. It is a timeless reading. So let's get into it. Now, sweet souls, there is going to be an extended reading. Um, I'm going to talk about your extended at the end. This was group one's reading. It just depends on what comes out for you. So let's just start shuffling some cards and we'll have a look at what spirit needs you to know. I'm going to pull this table closer to me, get a bit more comfortable and spirit tune me into my group twos, please. Those who chose the spoon card, does this person miss them? Does group twos person miss them spirit so i'm using a bunch of new decks today this beautiful deck in my hands is by spirit speaks it's a tarot deck and the oracle deck with the spoon card is the green glyphs oracle deck spirit for my group twos does this person miss them we have the nine of pentacles coming out for you upright does this person miss group two please spirit we also have the Ace oops, of Pentacles upright. Does this person miss group two, please, Spirit? 
we have the Magician. And two supplementary cards, Knight of Pentacles with the Page of Swords reversed. So here's the thing. The back of the deck is the Four of Pentacles. You may be dealing with somebody who is very stuck in their ways. It feels like this person isn't really able to think about you, if I'm honest, because they are very focused on their material world group too. This is an individual who seems to be really actively trying to either build the, their career or focus on their financial security. There's an energy here of material wealth and trying to create a legacy. I do think that this person is honestly too busy to really be in an energy of missing. There is a strong feeling here of making progress for this person. The Spoon Oracle card is reminding me of like old jail stories where people used to try to dig their way out with the spoon. So this person is a hard worker and they are someone who's very focused. So they commit to things seriously. They don't take commitment lightly. This is someone who like has a long-term plan for themselves and they're staying on task is what I'm seeing with this Knight of Pentacles, very focused on the plans that they have for their future. I do think that they're experiencing a lot of growth in their material world and this is what is keeping them focused. I actually think that this person is actively manifesting something. Um, and I'm kind of getting two messages for this group. If you're in a relationship with this person, they feel very secure in the connection and they don't miss you because they know that you'll always be there. If you're not in a relationship with this person, there is curiosity about you, but there's not enough to make them stray from their path. They're very focused on their path right now and their path has to do with financial gain, material growth, and making sure that they are ticking boxes they've set out to achieve. So long story short, it doesn't seem like they are missing you, sweet soul. They seem to be very preoccupied with their material endeavors. I do think the magician card is a spirit's way of saying that this person is very intentional. Their actions are intentional. Their communication is intentional. They don't make mistakes. So whatever they're doing is completely as it is. Like, I just feel like this is somebody who isn't trying to play games. They're actually just trying to be their best version of themselves. There is this energy here of projecting confidence and trying to, like, I think that you misinterpret their actions sometimes because I think that they want everyone to see them in, in a good way. Um, they're not necessarily trying to play games with you. I think that they just do things that in a way where a lot of people could interpret what they're doing as like, I think this person gets mistaken for flirting a lot because they come across as very charming or very confident, or they are somebody that really sort of is learning how to read a room and, use their intelligence to kind of win people over like they have a silver tongue is what spirit's saying so i don't mean to make you feel any less special but i just feel like this person is has a very charismatic side to them it's the giving libra placements you know where they just they are who they are <laughs> and a lot of people end up misinterpreting that as flirting um i think that this person comes across as very flirtatious or suggestive with their language when they're just sort of intrigued by how human exchanges work and how they can get reactions out of people when they say specific words. Um, I also just think this person is very charming. I'm going to come back to that. Key signs that I'm seeing, I'm getting Libra, but I'm seeing Gemini and Virgo very strongly so far. Um, there is a little bit of Capricorn here. There is a little bit of Capricorn, but um, mostly Gemini and Virgo. So let me see. I'm going to get more cards. Spirit, what is this person's energy towards group? Group two. I think this is a good deck to get. We'll get 
cards from a different deck as well. What is this person's energy towards group two, please, spirit? Okay. We have Aquarius. So I am getting friendly vibes, you guys. I'm getting very friendly vibes. At the back of the deck is Lilith Reverse. So some of you guys, this is an ex-love interest. This is someone who you had like a passionate affair with. They could have been somebody who you guys may have had like a situationship with as well. Um, I think that this person gave you the wrong impression, group two. That's how they're telling me. And I'm just channeling their energy. So I, I don't want to... Um, minimize your experience or anything but from their point of view it feels like they gave you the wrong impression this person's giving colleague vibes they're giving very like friendly vibes like i'm i'm your friend i'm your colleague um i'm just here to work or i'm just here to you know clock in and clock out um that aquarius energy i think this person genuinely enjoys your company your humor they enjoy um the sort of way that your mind works this person does look up to you and they admire you. Um, but there is this feeling of like they have a responsibility. So for some of you, this could be your boss or this could be someone who is a little bit higher than you in the workplace or they could be an age gap here because it feels like this person has to kind of hold you at arm's length group two. They have a responsibility here to treat you a certain way. Let's just move these cards over spirit. What can you tell us? We have the acorns card reversed. So when I see this card, the first thing I'm thinking of is investments. Um, dinosaurs at the back of the deck too. I feel like this person is kind of... I think they've just accepted the situation between the two of you for what it is. And I do think that this person is trying to project this energy of professionalism, responsibility, stoicism for a lot of you. I don't think I'm saying that right. Stoicism. Um, just being very careful. And it's not coming from a place of temptation. It's coming from a place of respect. They respect themselves, they respect the situation, they respect you, and they have a high regard for their public image. They don't want other people to see them in a negative light. So I feel like this person is seeing you as someone that's off limits. And it's not, again, it's not coming from temptation. Like they've, they've, is a feeling here of friend zoning group two. I do want to read from the guidebook for these two cards and we'll see what the guidebook has to say as well. We'll actually do that bottom deck energy too, that dinosaur energy. Let's have a look at that bottom deck energy with the dinosaur, please, spirit. It's my fingers that are causing us to delay. Okay, so the dinosaur card is about an old friend, deep connection, missing something, and strong imagination. A friendly looking dinosaur pops his head into the frame of the card you are looking at. He reminds you of an old friend and you feel comfortable in his presence. He smiles down at you and as soon as you offer a smile back, he is on his way and you start to miss him even though he, you never really got to know him. So for a lot of you, this person could just be a friend. It may not be a romantic connection and that's completely fine. For others of you, I think that you're attached to an idea of this person without actually knowing much about who they really are. So do they miss you? I think that you're very attached to the idea of them. I think that this person treasured whatever aspect of a connection you had, but I don't feel like there's any sort of heaviness here. I think that this person has a lot of purpose and direction in life and they're very focused on completing the cycles that they've created for themselves and achieving an energy of legacy in their lifetime. They want to be proud of their hard work. They want to be proud of the things that they've put their time towards. So they're very focused on their health. They're very focused on their lifestyle. They're very focused on their career. And they're very focused on feeling proud of themselves. Um, let's have a look at that spoon energy. 
What is this spoon energy about, spirit? So the spoon card is about independence, caring, pampered, and wealth inherited. Yeah, the silver spoon. A silver spoon sits on the table with a drop of glistening honey. Do you take from the spoon or find your own sugar? It can be difficult to accept what is given to you freely in life. As humans, we are proud to pave our, o our own ways, but there is a balance in accepting your inheritance and creating your own success. So this person may be very focused on their independence and breaking free from somebody else's sort of, um, they might be trying to go out on their own and trying to create their own success. I mean, I'm getting a lot of indications of them being very career motivated at this point, you guys. Let's have a look at that acorn card. Oops, wrong page. It must be this page. Nope. These pages are so thin. One more, there we go. So acorns. Um, in reverse, this card is about lost items, feeling shorted, feelings of inadequacy and out of luck. A pile of golden acorns stumble, tumble across the floor and as the light hits them, they shine like little treasures. When you see acorns in a reading, consider it a good omen. Perhaps a bit of luck is on your way. Keep in mind that card is reversed though. So it's not that luck isn't on your way. It's just that this reading feels like you two feel very differently about each other. I think um, there is a strong energy of friendship here. And I do think that if this is an old friend, then they are missing the friendship. Um, this person is very focused on a new beginning that they have in their material world. And they want to make sure that they are taking care of themselves first and foremost. This person is overall lacking the resources to be able to invest energy into this connection or anything new, if this is a friendship. Um, if this is a romantic connection, I really think that they have friend zoned the connection. And I really think that maybe you're the one that's really attached to an idealized version of this person. I think that this person has a lot of respect for all of you, regardless of what the nature of your connection is. Um, I think that this person is very charming, charismatic. There's somebody that a lot of people admire, but I also think that they're somebody that a lot of people want in their close circle. So they're coming across as quite congenial and they're very aware of their public image. They want to be seen in a good light as well. They could come from a really good background, good family. They could have a really solid and successful career. Um, they were giving self-made vibes, but also just feeling like they need to break away from the security and comfort of um something else so maybe their parents are really successful or they were fostered in a really successful corporation and now they're trying to do their own thing um i do think that you think about this person more than they think about you though group two that's really what i'm getting let's have a look at if they are coming back Okay, spirit, is this person coming back? Whoops. Is this person coming back, spirit? We have the lovers. Is this person coming back? We have the Knight of Cups. Is this person coming back, Spirit? We have the Seven of Cups. And at the back of this deck, we have the Wheel of Fortune reversed. Okay, let me get a second deck. Spirit, is this person coming back? of wands wow 
Wow. Spirit, what card do you want me to take? That was like 20. Is this person coming back? Okay, we have the Seven of Cups. Okay. And clarifying the Seven of Cups again. <laughs> Got the seven of cups twice we have the ace of swords reversed oops that's reversed okay and at the back of this deck is the empress which is crazy because behind the wheel of fortune in this deck was also the empress so you got a lot of synchronicities here's the thing sweet soul this person is going to start to feel very overburdened by their responsibilities and you will definitely hear from them again because they are going to want to play. They're not going to feel like they're living their life enough. And I think that this person doesn't really understand how they come across to you. I think that they are a real light in your life. And there is this energy here of them being very confused romantically. They're very confused emotionally. This could be someone who doesn't give themselves enough time to really be in their feelings and to process their feelings and to understand their attachments to people because it looks like the next time that you hear from this person, they're going to feel like they made a mistake with you and they're going to be very confused about the way that you're treating them and they're going to feel like they did something wrong here, but they're not going to fully understand what it was. And I think that this reading for you is a reading that's really clarifying a lot of how you feel about this situation. And if you chose this group, you're going to feel like this reading is sort of making all of your worst fears come true or confirming a lot of the things that you didn't want to hear. But ultimately, the way that this person has been treating you has been very confusing. They've treated you one way or they've said one thing to you and then they've done the other thing. So while this person tries to keep you in this box of friendship, they also have a lot of expectations on you when it comes to emotional intimacy. This person seems to just expect that you are going to be there and that you're going to be able to emotionally satisfy their needs. And the next time you hear from them, they're going to want to connect with you as they always do. They're going to suggest to do something that you always do. And they're going to be really confused about why you don't want to do it the exact same or why it's not as effortless and natural as it once was. Honestly, this person holds you to a very high esteem. And I do think that they have feelings for you. I just think that they are very much more focused on their material world. And it's not until they're forced to confront their confusing feelings that they realize that they even have feelings for you, group two. So if this is a romantic connection, I do think that this person is going to observe romantic feelings for you the next time they see you. Because there's this energy here of reaching out online and then a gesture happening in person that makes them confused and I'm getting same sex vibes as well for this connection but that doesn't have to be the case for all of you I just think that this person might have friend zoned this connection earlier than what they were ready for and so that leads them to question everything um I made a mistake is what's coming through with the Ace of Swords reversed. I made a mistake and I don't know how to move forward from here. Um, this person is going to miss you. That's why they're going to reach out to you. At the time that you're seeing this reading, they're still very focused on other aspects of their life. But what really makes them want to reach out to you is the fact that they miss being around you. They miss talking with you. They miss communicating. They feel like your conversations were very effortless, intelligent, witty. They, they really enjoy your company, your humor. And I think with the 10 of wands here, they've also just burned themselves out. They're so focused on the material world that they've pushed themselves to the point of burnout, um, which makes them want to go and get some food and watch a movie and hang out with you, maybe do one of your favorite hobbies together. Um, I feel like this person would want food. They'd want to get food with you or they'd just want to kind of do something a bit like self-care, a bit indulgent, a bit pamperish with that Empress energy. Um, this person definitely feels like they did something wrong and that's why they reach out for you, to you. I'm hearing, um, why didn't I hear from you? 
So this person may feel very guilty for not replying to a message that you sent them, or they may feel very guilty for not following up the way that they thought they were supposed to. I think that the ball was left in their court and they just kind of got carried away with all their responsibilities. So they're saying, why didn't I hear from you? But actually it was them. It was them that dropped the ball group too. So yes, you are going to hear from this person. I don't really know how you're going to feel about that though so let's get some advice for you spirit what is the advice for group two when this person reaches out again what is the advice for group two okay we have heal which is the star card reversed we also have the seven of swords seek the truth reversed and we have the Four of Pentacles open up, reversed. At the back of this deck is the Hanged Man, which is the Observe card. And it is reversed. So here's the... Th Actually, it's upright. So here's the thing. When it comes to advice, I feel like... Oops, just ruining the spread. Don't mind me. I feel like Spirit is saying... I'm, I'm gonna I've already got questions for your extended reading don't even worry <laughs> I've got a lot of questions already that I really want to get to the bottom of for you guys um but with that star card reversed the whole point of this current cycle in your connection is to get perspective is you are at a turning point in this connection and you need to decide what box to put this person in because they have put you in a box and that box was incorrectly labeled, but that's them. You know, that's their journey. That's their thing to deal with. And that's their problem to solve in the near future. What you need to do, because now you are more aware and you have this information, is you need to figure out how you can place this person in your life. Are they just a friend or are there feelings here that make friendship uncomfortable for you? There's an aspect of this connection that needs to be addressed and identified in order for you to be able to cope with what you were feeling and for you to be able to move forward pursuing your best possible outcome. If this person is somebody that you are interested in more than friendship, but they're not able to give you anything more than friendship, then you have to decide what boundaries you need to put in place to be able to leave yourself more available to somebody who can give you what you need. There is definitely an aspect of this person that is unavailable to you. You seem to be energetically wanting more in this situation that they just can't give you. So overall, your advice is to observe this information and to really trust your intuition as it shows you the truth. You are being offered a new perspective on why things have been the way that they have been. And this hanged man card is highlighting confusion. There is clarity amongst the confusion because confusion itself is an answer. If something is meant to be, it should feel clear. If something isn't, confusion really takes hold. So the confusion is an answer. You need to observe the situation for what it is and for how it really feels for you because something is not right and that information needs to be honored. Your intuition needs to be honored amongst whatever it is that you are feeling here. The other two cards are talking about deception and feeling closed off. So your advice is to not put all your eggs in one basket here with the four of pentacles reversed. You really need to stay open to growth in new directions and I think with the four of pentacles you need to make yourself less available to this person I do think that this person takes advantage of you and your accessibility I just feel like they assume that you're always going to be there group two and they assume that they're always going to have access to you in some capacity so with this four of pentacles reverse spirit is encouraging you to find ways to invest your resources especially your time your effort your acts of service in other areas of your life that are more rewarding for you and that lead to the outcome that you deserve. Investing in this connection is like investing in a dead end at this stage. And I do think that this is Spirit's way of showing, telling you that through your actions, you need to start to let go of your vice grip on this person. 
Seven of Swords reverse. You guys have been shown the truth. This person's actions speak louder than their words. They may have verbalized to you how they see you as well, but you guys are still seeking answers when the information is right in front of you. So that's the advice, sweet souls. I do want to talk about your extended reading now. The first thing I want to ask, it's not a, <laughs> you see me do that? I thought it was a um, push pen where there's like, but it's already there. Anyway, group two, those who chose the spoon card. The first thing I want to ask spirit is what is the purpose of this connection? And I want to ask this question from both perspectives for you and this person. What is the purpose of this connection for you and this person? I also want to have a look at what is the potential in terms of like best case scenario in the highest frequency timeline. <laughs> If you both with your free will choose, what is the potential of this connection? And then I need to bring it back down to earth based on reality. What is the realistic outcome? Based on nature, choice and free will, what is the realistic outcome between you two? And the last thing I want to ask is any advice. Um, we're going to ask for what advice does your spiritual team have based on the previous um, questions. We're just going to be filling in the gaps with that, that one. We're going to be asking for advice on how you can just feel the love that you deserve and attract the people that you deserve and how you should go on in this connection what you should do so that last question is really a filler question just to kind of summarize and address everything in quite a conclusive way so that's what we're covering in your extended i'm just going to read it out one more time so in your extended reading, we're asking spirit, what is the purpose of this connection for you and this person? What is the potential of this connection in the highest possible frequency? Best case scenario, if you both with your free will chose the best case scenario, what is that? And then we're going to ask spirit based on your habits, your free will and your likely actions, what is the realistic outcome between the two of you? And we're going to close your reading by asking for advice from your spiritual team, addressing whatever anomalies or inconclusive questions we have. So that is your extended reading group two. If you would like to extend your reading with me and join me in your extended reading, the link is in the description box. It is a wonderful way to support this channel as well as getting some additional messages for yourself. So that link will take you to my website. I do host nearly 300 readings there, so please click on the right group. Remember, you are group two of the Do They Miss You reading that I posted in April 2024. The link to the extended readings is in the description box and the pinned comment. So click there if you're going to join me there. If this is where you are leaving us, thank you so much for all your time, your energy, and your support. Thank you for trusting me with your messages and choosing me to read for you today. It has been a pleasure and an honor. I wish you peace, love, happiness, connection. Oh, that's a new one. Prosperity, abundance, happiness, health, wealth, and success. And joy on your journey ahead. Look after your beautiful selves, group two, until we meet again. Bye. group three and welcome to your reading if you chose the talisman card down here then this is going to be your reading now we're asking spirit does the person on your mind miss you um, is this person going to come back this was a reading chosen by 
the beautiful collective on Instagram who follow me over there. And then I let spirit take the wheel. It did a quick reading to see what we should cover. So a relationship reading it is for now. Um, I do have a beautiful collection of messages and suggestions to get through from that Instagram story, but I will be putting one up soon, um, probably in the next two months. So that's not really soon. I feel like this year is just going very fast. <laughs> so if you want to be a part of that, make sure you follow me on Instagram. While we are doing today's reading on YouTube, I'm going to be trying to get as much information about this connection as I can, but there will be an extended as well. Just asking follow-up questions. This piece of paper is what group one and group two had and there's space over here for you so we're going to talk more about that at the end let's get into it group three we will not dilly dally much longer spirit for my group threes those that chose the talisman card please spirit does this person miss group three does this person miss group three spirit We have the King of Wands coming out for you. Does the person on Group 3's mind miss them, Spirit? We have the Fool. Does the person on Group 3's mind miss them? We have the Seven of Cups. Is that seven? No, that's six. Does the person on Group 3's mind miss them, Spirit? We have the Ace of Cups. Oh, wow. I'm going to shuffle everything else back in. There was like 20 cards there. Clarify the Fool, please, Spirit. We have the Three of Cups reversed. Clarify the Six of Cups. We have the Star. And at the back of this beautiful deck is the Strength card. This is a new deck, my Group 3s. This is definitely one of the first times I've used it publicly. I might have posted it on Instagram. Um, but this is the Spirit Speaks Tarot deck, and I got mine from Tarot Stack. I do have a referral link in the description box. So here's the thing. I'm getting mixed energies in this group. This person is definitely missing you. The card of nostalgia and remembering came out for you. So they are reflecting on your connection, on previous experiences and on what you guys have already kind of been through together with that six of cups, as well as the star card. The star card is also a card of nostalgia and reflecting back on the past and how the past has shaped the present while also feeling hopeful about what the future holds. So I do think that this person is channeling the energy of your connection quite actively. They are thinking about it. They're reflecting on it. They're observing it. This feels very active. Group three, if you guys are in no contact, this person is actively thinking about you and they are actively contributing energy towards your connection. I do think that some of you, this is a newer connection. And I think that this person is trying to understand how they feel and how to move things forward with you. But I am also getting that the two of you could have a lot of history and that this connection is at a point where there feels like there's a new beginning here, group three. They currently are somebody who is generating feelings of fondness towards you. They definitely are very excited about what the future could hold for the two of you. And there seems to be a foundation of friendship here in this connection. This person is recognizing that the two of you have a lot of common interests and you have a shared vision about the future. So I think that this person is feeling quite hopeful and optimistic about what your future together could look like. They are also giving me this energy of desire. So... I did kind of want this reading to be more love-based, but I'm just going to, just in case you're not here for romance, be a bit more broad, and then I'll get specific about romantic messages. So from a broad perspective, to cover all scopes of connections, this person is definitely 
looking at you as a source of inspiration and direction. They seem to be planning things for this connection. They're planning things based on mutual interest, based on previous experiences of what they know you enjoy doing. They are trying to figure out how to continue to keep that spark here between the two of you. This is somebody who gets a lot of inspiration from you and from being around you. They find your energy to be very um, inspirational. I don't know how else to say that. Um, with the three of cups reversed, I also think that this is somebody who is genuinely trying to create more room for you in their life. For some of you, I did feel like there was a third party interference here. Could be other friends or other connections. Um, the three of cups makes me think this is an emotional thing. And I believe that this person is trying to get a bit more focused here. I do think that this person is trying to take things to the next level with you. Um, but we're going to see what the next part of your reading holds as well. These cards are really just answering the question of, do they miss you? And it's hard to say that they do because they feel like they're still actively present in your lives, group three. So if you haven't seen this person in a long time, they think about you so often that I'm channeling their energy as if they saw you this morning or yesterday, you know, that's how fresh this feels. Um, so they don't necessarily miss you because they still feel so actively involved in your life, but they definitely think a lot about your memories, your experiences, um, what you've been through together, and also what you've been through individually. If you've shared your story with this person and really kind of opened up to them, they cherish that experience. They think about it a lot. They think about what you've been through and, and what got you to where you are today. This person definitely puts you up on a little bit of a pedestal. You give um, celebrity vibes in this person's eyes. You're someone that is really inspirational. They idolize you a little bit here. Um, now, if with that third party interference, I feel like this person just wants to start to be a bit more clear about how much they enjoy spending time with you. They want to make sure that you know that this connection is a priority for them. If this is a romantic connection, this person is trying to eliminate any other people by trying to show you how focused they are on you and hoping that you reciprocate that intention back to them. I do think that this person is feeling a little bit um, foolish and naive, but they're hoping that this is mutual. If this is someone that you haven't been in contact with for a while, regardless of whether they're romantic or not, they are wanting to contact you very, very soon. There is a feeling here of resurrection as well as an optimistic new beginning with that full card and trying to take this connection more seriously this time. For those who are in a platonic connection, this person genuinely values the friendship. They genuinely value your time, your insights, the way that the two of you bounce off each other. I feel like regardless of the label of this connection, you, you guys have a lot of chemistry. There is a lot of attraction because there seems to be a lot of natural charisma and charm and the two of you just bounce off each other so the attraction is magnetic it's not like the an attraction like I'm, I'm talking about your energy the two of you are like magnets you just sort of one and the same drawn towards each other I think that this person also feels like you bring out the best side of them group three they they really think that you raise the bar, you, you set the standards high and you make them want more for themselves. You make them want to take care of themselves physically, to present their best self physically, but to also be a better person from a personality space. And they really feel like you are it. You're a 10 out of 10. Um, if this is a romantic connection, this person is very attracted to you, group three. They think that you are someone that has the full package in terms of what they're looking for. But there is an eagerness here to either get to know you better or to really take things to the next level. That talisman card is interesting because without reading from the guidebook intuitively, that card tells me that this person may be trying to protect something here in the connection or 
within themselves. And with the three of cups reversed, the only thing I can think of is that they're trying to protect this connection from external influence, from third parties, from people who might come between the two of you. And we do have an energy of jealousy here and protectiveness with the king of wands and the strength card. This is a feeling of ownership. Sorry to make, take it to that level, but these are energies that get very possessive over things that they invest in. Um, they don't want to be blindsided. They don't want to be undermined and they don't want to feel like they have to share things that are theirs and not to call you a thing, sweet soul. I'm just talking about the energy. I recognize that that language is very, um, I don't even know how to describe it, like primal, primal maybe. Um, let's have a look at what that talisman card means from the guide's book's perspective. I'm using a new deck called Green Glyphs Oracle, and I'm loving it. So I definitely rate this deck. Um, again, I got it from Tarot Stack. I have a few new ones that I'm eager to use on my channel, actually. So talisman, when upright, this energy is about a gift, heirlooms, protection, and good luck. This meaningful charm appeared in your life years ago. You can't remember from where or from whom, but it has gained importance over time and you rarely leave home without it. Maybe it's good luck or maybe it instills the faith you seek. And that's what the talisman card looks like in the guidebook. Now we're going to jump over to that next question now, because for me, this was really sweet and a little bit boring. <laughs> so let's see what's actually going on here in your connection. <laughs> Spirit for my group threes. Will they, will this person come back? What is the current energy of this connection, please, Spirit? What is the current energy of this connection? Okay, I got two cards that Spirit wants me to take. We have the Four of Cups and we have the King of Cups. That makes a little bit more sense. At the back of this deck is the Seven of Cups reverse. So some of you guys may have been waiting for this person to make up their mind and to figure out what they actually want from you and for the, from this connection. So it looks like they have chosen. Emotionally, there's a lot of desire here to make things more clear with you. They seem to be very focused on being more clear about where they stand and what they feel for you and the fact that they want to choose this connection. Um, this person has established an energy of emotional connection with you. So if this is a newer connection, they do have feelings for you already. If this is a pre-existing connection and things have just been a bit confusing and maybe dull, maybe there hasn't been a lot of action or a lot of um, emotional connection and depth, they are realizing that they want to explore that with you. There is a worry here of missing out on an opportunity with you and a recognition of being at a bit of a stalemate. At the very least, the Four of Cups is about boredom and feeling like you've kind of plateaued emotionally. Um, but at the most, it feels like a missed opportunity and looking back at an opportunity that's no longer within reach. What is the energy in this connection presently, Spirit? We have the third house. So communication is going to be very important in this connection. We have the first house reversed at the back of this deck. So I feel like this person is observing a false start or a missed opportunity here. And there is this desire to communicate, to kind of get things off the ground with you. There is also this desire to make it known that their interest is still there, especially if communication has been inconsistent or confusing. Um, communication is going to bring a lot of clarity. The third house isn't just about communication. There is also this energy here of like groups and sort of coming together in a sociable way. So the energy of the connection could be about trying to reestablish um, mutual interests, mutual connections, we have plane coming out, reversed. What is the energy of this connection? Okay, I've got two cards. We'll take them both. 
The card that fell on the table is Giant Tooth. And the card that ended up in my hands is Hummingbird. Okay, and at the back of this deck is Ostrich. So here's the thing, that Ostrich energy is about running and chasing. So it does feel like someone in this connection, and I'm just gonna have to be broad like that because it may be you, the viewer, or it may be your person, but someone in this connection has been actively trying to pursue an understanding of how they really feel. And now that they know how they feel, they are actively trying to pursue this connection. And this person who's actively trying to pursue this connection is feeling like there is a distance between the two of you. They feel like other things have gotten in the way. They feel like there's been missed opportunities where they could have, would have, should have prioritized time. And they also feel like they've been impacted by external influences. For some of you, this is physical distance. This is somebody that lives at a physical distance to you and they have to physically travel in order to see you. And they want to be able to do that. They want to be able to see you. I think that this person has a travel trip in mind um, to be able to spend more quality time. The energy of this connection is that there is a distance between the two of you right now. And if it's not physical, it's emotional. This giant tooth energy, I have had this card before, but I can't remember what it means in the guidebook. Intuitively, this feels like something very big, like an elephant in the room. It also feels like a lucky break. So I do think that between the two of you, there is an opportunity here to be able to get some traction in this connection, some positive movement, and to be able to address things that have either lingered or that haven't been addressed previously. It feels like we're clearing the air here and we're calling a spade a spade in order to be able to create the garden that we want in this situation. I do think with this hummingbird's energy reverse, this card talks about fleeting moments and temporary situations. I think that maybe that somebody underestimated this connection, assumed that it was going to be a temporary thing, um, only to realize that no, a lot more effort is required or a lot more can be gained in this experience. So I'm kind of getting two messages with that card. For some of you, whatever came between the two of you, it was assumed that it was going to be able to be dealt with quite quickly. And now that it's been a while, it just feels like we underestimated you know, that whole situation. We should have really prioritized communication and we should have really prioritized this connection because that's what we wanted. But instead it looks like we've neglected this connection. And for others of you, this hummingbird energy is about taking this connection for granted, especially with the four of cups reversed. I just assumed it was a temporary thing. I just assumed that it was gonna, you know, just be a short-term affair or a, a very quick sort of, I just assumed that they would always be there. So there is this energy of running now, chasing to try to catch up and to try to make um, the situation a bit more balanced. But the balance is coming from an emotional perspective. I feel like someone feels a little bit guilty here about letting things get the better of them. So let's see, like letting other things get the better of them. Let's see what the guidebook can tell us as well and what I've missed. So with that ostrich energy, upright we have aggression, strength, dominance, and territorial. I was picking up on a little bit of that with the king of wands and the strength card. The ostrich approaches with aggression to anyone who threatens its space. The fl flightless bird is extremely territorial as it exerts its dominance. Instead of approaching something aggressively like the ostrich, try to find a peaceful maneuver to regain control. So there is a feeling here of like protecting my space, possessing my territory again. Someone's afraid of like losing here. And now I'm hearing that song again, Don't You Forget About Me. That song came out in a different group, so there could be a connection to 80s music or The Breakfast Club here. 
either the radio station or the movie because sometimes that comes to mind too the um, radio program the breakfast club um, let's have a look at plane now this guidebook really tests my ability to know the alphabet <laughs> okay plane um, plane means traveling far oh actually you've got it reversed traveling near reflection observation spiritual expansion a plane flies into the frame it looks tiny as it soars thousands of feet above the ground do you wonder where the people inside are going where would you go if you could go anywhere is it better than here is it better than here interesting for some of you i'm hearing that didn't work out so now i'm back this person's coming back with their tail between their legs something else that they wanted didn't work out it doesn't have to be another person it could have just been that they really tried to like do something big and ambitious and it's just not going the way that they wanted it to so they're coming back with their tail between their legs feeling a little embarrassed and ashamed the giant tooth upright is about fears overwhelming thoughts and exaggeration and giving away power a giant tooth crashes to the ground it seems alive it reminds you of your fears the things you hope would never come true here you are alone wondering if this is happening or if it's just another dream what is it doing here what are you doing here yeah there's that bloody elephant in the room i feel like this person owes you an explanation at the very least but i also feel like they're coming in to have a conversation about how things just haven't worked out seven of cups reversed is giving me what glitters isn't gold this person may have been very attracted to the idea of something or someone and now they're realizing that it was all a lie I'm hearing that um, Biggie Smalls line, it was all a dream, except not in a good way. Like that song's talking about being able to um, achieve your dreams and live your dreams. And this person feels like it was just a lie. It was a fantasy. Um, I, I don't like that they're, I don't know, we're all in different stages with this connection, but they really expect a lot of emotional support from you here. Yeah. They're coming back because they know that you can make them feel good. So depending on what this connection is, just be aware of that, okay? They, they know they're coming back because they want you to make them feel good. We have the hummingbirds reversed, which is difficulty letting go, unattainable, reluctant, and avoiding easy changes. Two hummingbirds zip in front of your view. They're only there for a few seconds, but you catch their iridescent shimmer and murmur something to yourself about the beauty of the world. And as quick as they came, they're gone. This person may have a habit of like coming and going. So you may feel pressured to really accommodate them and to make room for them. If this is a friendship, I don't, I don't think that that's going to be too much of a worry. I think that, you know, you're okay with being able to make the most out of a short amount of time but if this is someone that you're wanting more stability with more structure they're not going to be able to actually give you that straight off the cuff i think that they are going to take time to explore what they want for themselves before they think about what's best for your friendship your connection um because they're coming in because they miss their friend they're coming in because they want to talk about what they've been going through and your connection feels like it's a something stable, something that they can rely on. Um, let's have a look at the next and last question. Spirit, can we have a look at what's going to happen when this person comes back? Because we know that they're coming back. So I'm just going to change that question a little bit instead of are they coming back? What is going to happen when this person comes back, Spirit, for group three? What is going to happen when this person comes back? We have the five of swords reverse, tail between my legs, I made a mistake. Tail is between my legs, I made a mistake. Knight of cups reversed, I put my heart on the wrong horse. Wow. What is going to happen when this person comes back, please, Spirit? We have the Queen of Wands reversed. 
What is going to happen when this person comes back? Please, Spirit. We have the Ace of Wands reversed. We have the Nine of Swords reversed. We have the Knight of Wands reversed. And we have the Knight of Pentacles at the back of the deck in the reverse position. So let's talk about this, my sweet souls. This person, I don't know. I, I'm trying to like, I'm going to tap into a few different observations of this connection. So let's talk about friendship first. If this is a friend and this person is, you know, just a friend, just a friend, group three, when they come back, they are going to not be in the best state. They're going to be feeling very low. They're going to have self-confidence issues. They're going to have self-esteem issues. They're going to be feeling like they made a very big mistake. They bet their money on the wrong horse and their heart was in the wrong place. This person fell for an idea of something that turned out to be completely the opposite and their worst fear came true with that nine of swords reversed. Not only did they have to experience the low of their heart betraying reality, but they also experienced the ego blow of this happening either in quite a public way or happening in a way where it directly impacted their pride and their self-esteem. This person feels like they have a pattern of going after things because it's exciting and there's this strong magnetism and attraction and then it just falls apart. It just is a quick burn and a quick end. And when it does end, this person gets really in a mood. They get down. Um, they overthink things. They, they question things. They ruminate on it and they take it very personally. This person is going to be feeling like they invested their energy in the wrong thing. And they're going to be at a point where they're looking for guidance on what they should do next. They don't have a direction. They don't have a sense of purpose. They don't know what to do and they don't know what to invest their time, their energy and their emotions into. This person has three nights in the reverse position. The only thing that they do have is their words, their communication. They may even be struggling financially. And I feel like as a friend, they're coming to you for support emotionally, for clarity mentally. There's a lot of backwards communication here, um, back and forth communication, sorry, of them kind of bouncing ideas off of you, group three, and trying to understand what your perspective of the situation is so they can understand what they should do for themselves. This person trusts your judgment. They feel like you know them well enough to be able to give them the advice and the information that they need. And through that sense of friendship with you, they are going to also be seeking a boost in self-confidence. They're going to want to forget about their issues to a certain extent. So this person is a little bit of a mess, I'm sorry to say. So be careful because they're also going to be a bad influence on you. They're also someone who is probably going to influence you into doing things that you've been trying to avoid doing. The two of you are definitely going to blow off steam together. There's an energy here of, of having like big sort of impulsive moments um, to either numb or distract from whatever's happened in this person's life. So through friendship, that's what I'm seeing. If this is a romantic love interest, the themes are very similar, but it just is going to be applied differently. So let's talk about that. I'll just reset my second camera. So if this is a romantic love interest, the way that I see this person coming back is that they still feel like they've been investing their time, their energy into the wrong thing. But the way that this is showing up is that they've wasted their time. This person will feel like they've been wasting their time and they are coming back with their tail between their legs because they ultimately feel like they made the wrong decision. 
what they've been focusing on is not what they actually want. And so they come to you with this idea of either rebirthing the connection, regenerating the connection, or just trying to really have a look at what went wrong here and having a better understanding of what made the spark go out. For a lot of you, if this is a newer connection, I don't think that you're going to want to continue to keep seeing this person because not only do they change their mind very, very quickly, but the energy isn't constant enough. This person gets distracted easily. They are inconsistent with their communication. And they're also somebody who can't turn the initial spark into something substantial. So while you may have a lot of chemistry with this person, if this is a newer connection, they don't make you feel good about yourself. They make you almost feel used. They don't give you enough of a reason to want to stay. So them coming back is actually going to confirm that they can't give you what you're looking for. Not only is there no romance, there is no more attraction, there is no more intention, and there's no more growth with the Knight of Pentacles reversed. So I do think that if this is a newer romantic connection, the next time they come back, it's going to be very obvious to you how little security this person can offer you and how much of a mess they're, they're in. And you don't want to be a part of that. You're making the executive decision to protect yourself from this person's destructive energy. If this is a connection that's been in your life for a while and you've just been going through a rough patch, it's going to take a lot of work romantically this connection is going to take a lot of work there's going to have to be a lot of honest conversations the next time that this person comes in they aren't able to be stable they're not going to be in a position to show up as a supportive figure in your life but they're going to be expecting you to be supportive in their life they're going to be expecting you to compensate and to keep this connection going i'm hearing hold me down even though they can't give you the same. There is a strong energy here of I'm a mess and I just don't have what you need, but I can get there eventually. I just don't know when. So the next time that you see this person is going to be very frustrating for you, especially if you've known this person for a while, because it's going to feel like you're still in that place of I'm in the dark here. I don't know what to expect. I don't know when things are going to get better. And you're really just holding on to memories of when times were really good and the idea of times getting better. But there is no evidence, realistically, that times will get better with this person. And there is no evidence, energetically, of this person changing. They seem to be self-sabotaging and they are very focused on themselves and they only really come back to you because they want you to make them feel better about themselves. So the next time that you see this person, the protective energy is you of yourself because there is this feeling here of this person taking more from you than what they're able to give. They can't give you anything. Three nights reverse. The only thing they can give you is an impulsive decision to want to see you. They can't give you a, a, a boost in self-esteem. They can't give you romance and romantic gestures. They can't give you genuine kindness unless it's self-vested. And they can't give you consistency or stability. They can only give you a short burst of their time. And so... I do think that the next time that you see this person, the talisman is you protecting yourself from this person's energy. So that's what I'm seeing. Let us get some advice for you now, and then we'll talk about your extended reading. Spirit, what advice do you have for group three? What advice do you have for group three in this connection? Okay, we have heart chakra. What advice do you have for group three, Spirit? We also have the six of cups reversed, simply love. And we have the hierophant reversed, which is teach. At the back of this deck is 
strength card, which is detach. So here is the thing. Maybe I can do this. Will that work, Spirit? Um, not really. That's all right. Okay, so here's the thing. The heart chakra coming out upright. There is an energy here of empathy, compassion, patience, and healing. I don't think it's in your best interest to impart all of this onto this person. I think this is about spirit telling you that it's that time and that connection to check in with your heart space. Your heart space is more than your feelings. It's your healing. The heart chakra is connected to your lungs and taking care of this part of your body physically. And I do think that your advice is to make sure that the choices that you're making, the actions that you're taking are in your best interest, first and foremost, for your healing journey, but also for your emotional well-being. Not because your heart is telling you that it wants something, but what is best for your emotional well-being, group three. You are going to have to be patient with yourself as you experience those fond feelings of attachment for this person throughout the highs and lows of what is coming next in this connection. Don't make impulsive decisions. Don't react from a space of strong emotion, whether it's a strong sense of love for this person or a strong sense of anger, whatever the emotion is, don't react from a place where you're just experiencing that strong emotion and you want to take an action straight away. Sit with that feeling for a little bit and then observe what is in your best interest to do. This connection is going to make you feel like you have to make a rash decision because this person is moving so quickly and you feel like it's just gonna slip through your fingers unless you seize the moment and really devote yourself to this temporary experience. Because that's the thing, the next time that you see this person, they will be going through a temporary crisis and they will be looking to you for support. But that doesn't mean that you need to do what they want you to do or what they're asking you to do. It is a temporary crisis. You have to think long-term. What is in your best interest long-term? With that Six of Cups reverse, this is a very heartfelt connection. There is an attachment here based on your shared experiences, based on your past experiences. And you have to consider, am I acting based off of who they were or based off of who they are? Because I think that this person is no longer who they used to be and you're still attached to a memory of them. But that is for you to fully develop and understand for yourself. It's going to be different for all of you. I don't think that this person is a villain by any means, but I do think that they're not as invested in the present as they say they are in the first part of your reading we had that present energy of wanting to kind of make things fresh between the two of you and then we see that by the time you actually see this person and hear from them again they'll feel like they've made a major mistake so this person just struggles to follow through and to commit themselves to what they say they're going to do. So your advice with the Six of Cups reversed is to acknowledge this person for who they are when they're standing in front of you, not for who they were and not for who they could be, but for who they are when they're standing in front of you. With the Hierophant card reversed, I do think that spirit is encouraging you to take a step back and to have a look at the bigger picture here, to observe the pattern and to make the appropriate changes so that cycles don't repeat and cycles don't persist. There is an energy here of learning and the five, well, that card in any other deck is the Hierophant, but in this heartfelt deck, it is about teaching. So I don't think it's your responsibility to try to teach this person, to try to prove a point to this person. You really are only responsible for yourself. You really need to observe this from, well, what am I doing to this situation that is causing me to go through the same cycle again and again? It's not all about this person. 
It's your unique experience. How can you take more accountability and how can you make changes to ensure that you're getting the appropriate movement in your life? I do think that a lot of you are holding on to a ghost of a person here and not who they really are. So stay grounded, be observant, and don't let feelings from your past get in the way from you being able to appropriately heal and take care of your emotional well-being in the present moment. That's what I'm seeing for you. And when it comes to your advice group three, let's I knew that was gonna happen. Let's talk about your extended reading. So here's the thing. I feel like this is a complicated situation. Um, there's a few things that I want to ask spirit and I'm really hoping that I am able to think of everything that is going to be helpful for you. So group three, those who choose the talisman. The first thing I want to ask is a question I asked one of the other groups as well. I want to ask spirit, what is the sole purpose of this connection? Why is this person in your life? What is the sole purpose of this connection? Um, and I'm spelling soul as in S-O-U-L. <laughs> what is the sole purpose? Why did this person come into your life? I also want to ask, is this connection in your best interest? Whether it's a friendship, whether it's a love interest, we need to ask because I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of help here. And we all have our highs and our lows. And if this is a long-standing connection, it's likely that you've both been able to support each other. But I think we just need to lay it out black and white. Is this connection in your best interest? The other thing I need to ask is, what is... I think I just need to check in and ask how this person feels for you. Because we're seeing a lot of wishy-washy energy here. And I don't think that their actions reflect how they feel. I think that they feel very guilty for the way that they treat you and for the way that they expect you to show up for them. So I want to kind of figure out how they actually feel about you. Um, and just explore the depths of their heart chakra. It's very obvious to me that from your end, you have some very strong feelings to this person, group three. So I do wanna have a look at how they feel for you. And for number four, spirit, what should we ask? What should the fourth question be? Yeah, I'm hearing the, um, the words, how does this person plan? How does this person plan? to show up for you. I guess this is kind of looking at their intentions. How does this person plan to show up for you? So that's what your extended reading will look like. It's very messy writing. Um, I hope you can read it. I hope you've been listening. If that sounds interesting, especially if the first part of your reading resonates and you wish to support me in this channel, the link to your extended reading will be in the description box as well as the pinned comment. That link does take you to my website, Group 3, where I host nearly 300 extended readings so please make sure you click on the right group remember your group three of the does this person miss you reading that I posted in April 2024 triple check before you spend any money before you check out that you've clicked on the right group please because it takes me a long time to check my emails just to put it into context I have uh, 3,000 emails um yeah. <laughs> so please make sure that you are clicking on the right group. Um, that's all I have for you right here on YouTube. And if this is where you are leaving us, thank you so much for your time, for your energy and for your support right here on YouTube. Thank you for trusting me with your messages. And I wish you peace, prosperity, abundance, happiness, health, wealth, success and joy on your journey ahead. Look after your beautiful selves group three until we meet again. Bye.